Fisher Christian back with the video. Uh, this is kind of a general update of a lot of the things that have been going on. There's no point of really me going over a lot of these things. A lot of people like uh, Johnny for Currency 365 and the people that he presents as well, along with Pimpy and a few others, they've been explaining certain things. But I think we're at a point now where when it comes to actually proving whether or not if this is going to take place, I think for me, if you just go back over the videos and you'll see time after time and as well as others that we, this thing is happening and we are at a point where at no other time in the history of the dinar that this is the perfect opportunity, especially when we look at it from, from a prophetic point of view, when things seem at their worst, there's going to be a break in the financial system. All right. And right now, it's kind of weird how everything is meeting together all at once with the pieces in place. It's not like there's a whole bunch of puzzle pieces over here, but the dinar is revaluing over here, but all the other pieces aren't in place yet. So as I go back and I look over the chart, and I'm just going to start from the bottom, just go all the way around really quick. And I will start with uh, some of the major players. You see what's happening with China. Uh, they're devastated. Uh, it's going to be. It's going to take a very long time for their economy. Uh, Trump has won the trade war. Now you see now what's going on uh, with this over here. And Kim Clement talked about a, a a great wealth transfer will also come from this area too as well. And we're going to talk about uh, Iraq. But then you have this whole thing with OPEC and the oil prices, and it's you know kind of crazy. You see how the oil prices are getting cheaper and cheaper. And I'm not sure exactly as far as like the markets and how what's going to actually take place. I'm still looking for the Dow to go down way further than what it is right now. And I do expect and I'm waiting and hoping to pick up a lot of the stocks that I'm looking up, looking at, uh, at, a, at cheaper than what they are right now. But then we have the debt, right? The debt, we've, we've discussed the debt. And the debt was going to bring down the economy anyway. You know, it's kind of funny because when I talk about people, how, oh, look at the, you know, look at the economy, it's crashing and all this. It was already crashing. It's just that this event that we did not know, we knew that there was going to be some kind of event, but we didn't know that it was going to be, be an event that would cause the economy to stand still like it has and cause so much chaos. So the debt itself, I mean, right now, everything that the United States is doing, all the extra money, all the extra stimulus, all the, all the extra uh, forgiving loans and forgiving this and doing the, and whatever the case, extra funding for all this and that, all that is, is debt. They could give everybody $5,000 a month. It wouldn't make a difference whether it's a $1,200 a month or $5,000 a month. It's all turning into debt. So I believe when the system crashes that a lot of this debt is not even going to exist anymore. Now let's go over to the gold standard with the merger of the so-called merger of the Fed and the, the Federal Reserve and the Treasury Department and how Trump now has more control over that. So if he controls the Federal Reserve, which means he's going to have more control over the central banking system and keep in mind if the Federal Reserve is cutting off all the other central banks that's where a lot of our money was going so you cut off all the other central banks then that's all the other central banks have to now start coming up with a lot of their own money what are they gonna have to do but when it comes to the gold standard I believe that's a piece of the puzzle that will not come until after the revaluation because I believe it's going to take time for the whole entire system to actually change over any time that you jump start something, right? Like when you know when somebody's coming in and you know they they died of a heart attack and they're on the table and they got those those things where they put them on the chest and they and you try to revive them, right? Right. Sometimes it takes a few times. Right? So I believe that there's going to be actions that are going to continuously pump the economy after uh, after it's fallen, but the dinar RV and the revaluation. Right, of all these multiple currencies, I believe that's going to be a part of it. And then the gold standard is going to be the other addition to that. And I can almost see, after all this is said and done, 
uh, if some of the Dow companies, whether they still exist after this time or not, but I could really see the Dow really going 40, 50,000 after all of this is done because that's the only way that you're going to be able to jumpstart the economy. Boom, right? All You have all the dinar holders and all the Vietnamese dong holders here in the United States and all across the world. You just increased the value and you've just made a lot of people a lot of money that's going right back into the markets. People can be buying houses, buying cars, buying things, paying debts off, right? So that's going to help jumpstart the economy. And I think that having the gold standard is going to stabilize the economy to the point to where, where there's going to be a lot more confidence in the markets. Because people don't really fear a crash until it really crashes, right? It could go down by eight, ten thousand, 10,000, but it hasn't really crashed yet. To put that fear into people that, hey, we've got to figure out something different. So I've, I've discussed that as a separate event from the global currency reset. Then we have the crypto markets, and I don't talk about cryptos that much. Um, I've in, I'm invested in some, but the markets in the cryptocurrency are up and down, just like the regular markets are down. And I believe that once we get through this time period, that you're going to see some changes. You, there will be some money made off of cryptocurrencies. The only problem that I have with that is, is that I don't, I don't think a lot of coins are going to survive. And a lot of coins shouldn't survive. And a lot of companies and a lot of banking systems are going to the blockchain, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that the coins themselves are going to prosper from those. But I think we have to be very, very careful. It's like investing in the oil industry, right? I think we have to be very careful because what Kim Clement talked about, a new energy source, not, a, not, a, not another whole another like oil well. I believe this, this is a new energy source. And so I, we have to be careful of how we invest in oil in the long term. Because if there's a new energy source that is found and it can be duplicated and replicated and put in every device or you know, whatever or you know, used across the world in a timely fashion, right? whether it has to do with cars, or, then it's going to have an impact on oil. You will always need oil. No matter what, you're always going to need oil. You cannot, it, it would cost hundreds of trillions or even a quadrillion dollars to change over the economy from oil to something different in my opinion now we have what's going on in iraq and we have the new prime minister and we have the formation of the government that's supposed to be coming in 10 days or less right and they're talking about voting virtual voting and i'm you know i'm listening to different people talk about the prime minister and I hope that he does what he is going to do. And I've discussed this with the whole thing with the uh, Prophet of Solomon and those and, and how a body doesn't necessarily have to be in power. He's head of the political party. So he still wields a lot of power. But that all remains to be seen. Uh, you know, Iraq is currently on a lockdown. Uh, you know, as far as their economy, it's devastated. You know, people are still trying to protest. You still have a lot of issues going on over there. You have the United States pulling out of Iraq. So all those things, again, they're, they're coming to a head, and it's all coming together all at once. You have the Federal Reserve System and the Central Banking System, which I've explained to you. And we, we've done many, many articles about the change in the economy, about going to a gold standard and just picking through all the different articles. I think at this point, the central banking system is in trouble and it's going to crash and burn. Or the president of the United States is going to step in and save the system, but it's not going to be the same system. It's going to be a whole different system. Of course, you have the central banking system and the whole uh, blockchain technology. And I think a lot of changes are coming with that. And those are going to be down the road. And I think in the global currency reset is going to help push it. But we're never, I think in my opinion, we're never going to get rid of cash. So as we looked at the events, of course, you know what, we, we looked for a new PM. We got one, and it's just a wait and see. Hopefully nothing will happen between now and then where there's another delay. I don't think there's going to be a delay. Uh, hopefully there won't be. Because uh, that would suck if something happened where he had to step down and they had to choose somebody else or something happened, you know for any reason at all why he has to step down or be removed from the position. 
that would just put everything another delay. I, I know we, we, we have come to the end of the trade war. Right now, we're just waiting on China to fulfill its obligations with the whole trade. But, you know, right now, we're going through this whole virus thing. But, you know, you guys have to remember that Trump signed a whole bunch of new trade deals. Uh, and we also talked about the mass arrest and what's going on right now with the cartel. And, like, the cartel is linked to a lot of politicians. Once they get all those guys down there in South America, and that's going to trickle all over. Now, as far as the other... As we talked about, that deals with E and Weinstein and all these other people that are involved in the whole uh, trafficking issue and all that. We have yet to see. There are there have been tons of arrests, put it that way, behind the scenes. I think what they, there was one raid uh, about six months ago where they raided and there was like over 500 people were arrested, and you're seeing pockets of people being arrested all over the place. So we are seeing the mass arrests. We are seeing that. What we haven't seen is the people that are on top or are in the middle or well-known that are coming down. So once we start seeing that, uh, then you know that things are moving forward. Now, of course, you know, we talked about the protest, you know, before the virus. Uh, I remember doing the video where I was discussing all the different protests that were going on worldwide right before this virus hit. We were talking about what was going on in South America what was going on in Europe, you know, Italy, France, um, Iraq, and a whole bunch of other places were experiencing daily protests, Hong Kong, daily protests every day for months and months and months without stop. And now it's stopped. Because that was the event, that's what we were looking for, was these mass protests. That's one of the things I know these mass protests were supposed to help bring the revaluation, but it did not occur. And when things get seem like they're at their worst. So looking for the crash, we're looking for the things when the when things seem at their worst, it doesn't even really now that it things that things are starting to dissipate and we're seeing a lot of fake news and fake articles about people, you know, saying there's you know, they're going by hospitals and saying, Hey, this hospital said that they were busy, they were packed and all this and all that and things aren't happening and they're recording they're they're recording people who have heart attacks actually have having died of the virus so there's a lot of confusion there's a lot of confusion over the cure because they did not want people let me tell you something when you when you are on your deathbed and there is a drug that you don't know that's going to help you and yet you can't get access to it because that's what they, they didn't want people to get healed from this mainstream media came and fought this so hard about all the different, all the, some of the different drugs that have been mentioned that will help fight this virus. They're coming against it because they don't want people to get better. They want this economy to be, to be brought down completely so they can take power. It's never been about, never been about helping the people because if they really wanted to help the people like here in Illinois, they wouldn't have, been, in one day they announced the lockdown forcing millions of people in the state of in the state of Illinois to rush to the grocery stores. And so now you have all these millions of people harboring for for 48 hours straight. Busy, 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 busy. Lines are long. People are standing shoulder to shoulder in there trying to get food and this and that. If they really cared, they wouldn't have done it that way. Because because now grocery stores are the hub for contracting the virus because everybody goes to the grocery stores and because people aren't paying attention and they're going every single day and in some cases I see people the same people twice a day and a lot of people come in every day because they live so close that they do their shopping almost daily and they're not going to go to talk to them and you know you got to be nice you know and everything you can't be rude to a customer but when you hear them talk and you know it's just kind of disgusting this you know, that you're standing here talking to me while I have my mask on, but yet you're coming here every day and you're possibly spreading the virus. So there's a lot of things. There's, there's, there's many things that are coming. It's all coming. All this stuff is coming together, folks. We are in a period. We are in a time that this is perfect. You have a lot of people that are at home. And that's why some people won't be. If this thing happens while this thing is still going on, Right, where there's still lockdowns, some of you aren't going to even be able to go out and get to the bank. 
some of you aren't going to be able to go and, and exchange Vietnamese Dong on that day. If it happens. Because it is the perfect time. It's the perfect time for Iraq. You know why? Because they can educate their citizens. They are people at home. Their business just shut down. You don't need a three or four day weekend to educate all your customers. I mean, to educate all of your citizens. They have the opportunity now. This is the why now. In the midst of all this, because he's trying to jumpstart the economy. There's going to be major things. We talked about the stone, the simple stone. And I'm going to get to that in, in this next video. I'm going on a video marathon here over the next couple of days, folks. So if you see a lot of videos more than normal, it's because I'm on a marathon. Despite everything on that's going on in my life and at work, I'm doing all I can to present this information and get it to you. But all these things are coming to a head. And we are in the perfect timing. They can educate their citizens because of people are locked in. It's preventing a lot of people from doing what they feel like that needs to be done to get the government to do what they're supposed to do. So here we are, we're at this point, and we are in the why now. The break in the financial system is going to happen because they're not going to have a choice. So, and uh, there's a lot of uh, confusion, people, about where you guys need to go to exchange your dinar. You cannot exchange your dinar right now at any bank. You cannot do that. On the day of the RV, you will be able to go in. Do not call it 800 number. Don't go sit down with some investment company. Just, it's going to be a very, it's going to be a lot more simpler than what many of the gurus are telling you about 800 numbers and investment groups and all this and all that. It's going to be simple. Your only obstacle is going to be yourself and where and where you are at on the day the RV happens because to me it's not going to matter whether or not if I go and exchange my my dinar on the first day or the third day or the seventh day because I know they are not going to do this and have all these people come in and then all of a sudden just crash the value they're going to give people time to do this now remember the central bank of Iraq can set the rate without it doing all that you know without it floating right as they do right now, right? It's stuck on 1190 or, or whatever it is right now, and it's just been there. So they could do this. They could technically do the same thing with the dinar, right? So if they come out with a rate of three dollars and twenty cents, that's the rate that they're going to do. Now, if they decide to go ahead and float, like I said, and I'm not saying this is going to happen. I just had these profound visions of. What I saw on the day the RV over five or back in 2011 and 12. Well, before I was making any videos or anything like that. But what I saw, I saw a number of currencies changing in value as well as the dinar. But the dreams that I had, some of the dreams that I had when I woke back up and then when I fell back asleep again, it picked off. It picked up where it's at. So when I discuss the dreams, these are actually three different dreams, but it picked up like where it left off at. And so in the, I did see it go. I did see it go from one dollar to three dollars, and then it went to five dollars for several days. I have no idea why or why that would occur, or whatever the case. And why they would raise the value, why the central bank would raise the value for several days unless it was floating, or they had another purpose in mind. But it may not even happen that way. So I've just thrown that out there. So I'm still looking for the crash, looking for RV day, and making sure that we're ready and prepared for whatever your position that you're currently in right now. And I know a lot of people, you guys are hurting. Uh, some of you are actually probably enjoying your vacation, getting full unemployment and everything else. So we are in perfect timing. We are here. We are, this is, this is the time. I just can't see this going past like another six months. The economy needs to be revived. We need to take those electrical things and shock the system. You're going to shock it, right? And this is what Trump is going to do. He's going to shock it, right? And then boom, it's going to go up. And then boom, it's going to go up. 
and then boom, it's going to go up. And the, the economy is going to, on every shock, is going to get better. It's going to take a little time to get everything back into place as far as getting the factories and the people moving and the people going to work. But they're going to, it's going to have a shock to the system, right? And remember, I showed you the article about how Venezuela or Argentina needed a shock to their system. They needed to do something radical in order to change what was going on. But knowing our economy needs this, there's going to be very many investment opportunities in all this. And I'm trying to, with, with the time that I have and everything that's going on, uh, there's been plenty of investment opportunities. And I'm, I'm going to say this. Some of you who are, so, some of the Kim Clement acts and the industries he, he talks about, remember Kim Clement said he's going to release them one by one. So we're still going to have time. So even if you screw up on your dinars, which hopefully you won't because you're going to take your dinars and buy dong and you're going to buy other currency. And when those are value, you're going to bring in more money. But for those who are going to be new, when they revalue the dinar, you're going to have all these people say, how did you guys know? Is there anything else that's going to happen? Right now, there are going to be other currencies. So you're going to be able to bring people in and show them, hey, look, you know, these are all the different investments that you can get into. These are the currencies that we still think that haven't changed in value. These are the stocks that Kim Clement and, and others talked about. So there's going to be multiple opportunities to invest. Anyways, guys, I thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, Twisted Christian out.